All right, welcome back to the Road to SSL series. We're on episode number 18 for today. In the last episode, we ran into an RLCS analyst and quite a few SSL level players from the previous season. So we took a bit of a hiatus and we're back after about a week. We've got three more matches left in the placements, as you can see here, seven out of 10. But before we do that, of course, we have to do the meme of the day and we've got Misery's Dormant. I think I have an idea. All right, hear me out. Volcano, Torment, Torment, Volcano. <laughs> Let's see what happens. That's a good start. I'm going to grab everything again and make sure I smooth everything out. Smooth. 69. Nice. All right. Now we remove this one. Looking a little better. Um, I mean, honestly, like I think this one's going to be really easy because I'm just going <laughs> to take the volcano and probably place this part in front of Torment. I mean, I'm done. <laughs> one of the easiest ones I've done, but I think it's pretty funny. All right. So a week later, we've got Gray, Big Murph, and Ah, uh, you mad, bruh. Uh, but um, I think these these players are going to be more so the level that we're supposed to be playing at. This guy's going to be doing a backflip uh, play there, which I can just stay near the ball. He does bump me, but I at least get a pop over, and this could be really awkward for them. Really good play. I'm going to try and stay close in mid here. That way I can pop it over this guy. Maybe my team can finish close. Nice finish. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, we, we took a bit of a week break, so we definitely should be seeing players that are more at this level, uh, if not actually at the level. But we were at about GC2, GC3 at the last season beforehand. So we were quite up there. Good boost steal here too. I'm still last here. So you see if he wants to make one more touch. He does make one more touch, but it could be beat here. One thing, I just don't want to commit on anything that's uh, going to be dangerous for me. I can still hold on to my boost and cut in here. Pop up high off the backboard. This guy just uses a lot of his boost to go back up the wall. He's probably used about 40 of it. He probably still has quite a bit on the backboard, and he just used a lot more. So now I know this guy's pretty low, and I can pop this up. Now I'm going to wait for this guy to go, maybe. If not, I'm going to pop it backwards to make it a little awkward for them. Bump this guy as well. Close for my teammate. We, we've kept pressure pretty well here just by doing very, very little. Just making sure that we're using the position we have to pressure them. Like here, there's a lot of space. I am last though, so I don't want to go full committed. Like on a full shot. If I boom myself into the uh, the crossbar there or into the, the net, um, we're going to be in a diff difficult situation. Once again, I've got space here for that ball to pop off the corner. I could have caught it. Back pass to Big Murph should be uh, hard for him to deal with. My teammate's up. I can't really... I can hear him somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Audio cues are huge in this game. Good bump for my teammate. That's going to be open. So, yeah. If I didn't have sound on, I definitely would not have known that my teammate was doing something above my head. I definitely think audio cues are super important in this game. Especially for hearing boost and stuff. Some people have dark boost. Actually, good example of that. My teammate has black boost. It's very hard uh, to see. I did I get the demo here. I could go for a pass or something. Or go for the... Uh, the corner, but unfortunately that guy spawned on the right side. It's decent from, from us, but he did get a pinch, but either one of us getting that touch would have been probably fine. I think that it was maybe better for him to even take it because it was on the side that no one was challenging. Uh, that's a really bad touch from them. I'm going to pass this forward to my teammate. Don't need to risk. Okay, well, I should have just scored it. <laughs> you know what? No, I think that's definitely a more safe play to go for the pass. But even though he missed, I think it's a good option, especially when there's so much space. But they really should be finishing that. Definitely do some open net training in, uh, in some you know free play or uh, what's it called? Free play or in like a training pack. Great off the backboard. Big Murph might be here, so I'm just gonna wait for it. He flipped the wrong way. I'm gonna keep this close to my touch here. I'm gonna go for a shot uh, close post. It's gonna be tough for him to read that. Um, I can shoot that far left, but it lets him turn into the ball rather than it, it being over his head here. Because he's underneath the ball right when I shoot it to the right side. I get top right corner. Obviously, the placement's really, really good there. But um, the idea is that a top right shot there is probably way more difficult to save. And, and if he, if you go top left or, or the left side at all, then he clears it to the left corner. And then you've given away the ball and he can collect it. Where even still, still if you don't quite hit the shot on, on target, he'll probably pop it up off the backboard or make it awkward because it's above his head. So pretty good uh, lesson there, but hopefully uh, we don't get fast forfeits like this. I mean, my teammate played really, really well that game. So we got Big Murph again, but he's on my team this time. We got a team of Mikey, <laughs> okay. Mikey and Frank, I'll just say. Once again, I don't know, like a lot of these names, I don't even know if they're safe to say on YouTube, which is kind of funny. This guy gave me an open net. That was definitely open if I just moved up. He made a too heavy of a touch there, but I'm not gonna score that right away. See my teammate passes across. So I see that he's going to get ready for that left touch. So I'm just going to stay in the corner. This guy's going for an early challenge. I'm just going to get in the way. This guy popped out really hard, hard. So I can just get in the way again. Nothing too dangerous. My teammate pushed up for that, which is fine. But it's never really going to be a play that he can attack. And that's not a great touch for me. But uh, Frank isn't making a bad touch. This seems more the level that we were getting used to in the season uh, prior. 
like season nine. This could be a bad touch. I'm gonna go for this immediately. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably a bad touch off the corner if I don't go for that challenge right away because big big Murph is still pretty far ahead. Now this guy might go for this. I'm just gonna pop it off the backboard and get ready for the next touch. This could spill it to my teammate. He's in a better spot. It's a nice try. Go for the early challenge. They might not expect it. It sometimes does pay off quite a bit. And then I'm gonna go for a fake here. Should be my teammate. I'll try to pop this guy if I can. Good finish. There we go. So the second that I go for that play off the uh, the touch here, that's all I needed to do. Just force him into a touch, and then I go for the bump off this guy to pop up, pop him off the ball. Um, just letting my teammate get that better position. It's always really good to just watch out for where your teammate is. Honestly, by the time you're in GC3 or SSL, you should have full awareness of where all the players are, but I don't think that's the case for a lot of players. It's going to be tough for him to save. Good save from him. And he's probably going to take both boosts, which is okay. My teammate's going to go back corner. Oh, he actually cuts in mid. That's actually decent. Okay, he lets me go for this. It's actually too fast for me. I think that he made the decision to like leave it and go for the mid, but then him, him turning there is going to be like impossible for anyone to deal with because, as you can see, he just left the play. Like The ball was coming right to him, and he just went for the back corner boost. I really thought he was there, and then I tried to you know, make up for it. But he completely bailed on a touch that was going right to his car. And it's tough it's tough to know if uh, your teammate's going to be there for you or not um, in his perspective. So I would say not to just throw the ball out like that. This guy goes for another touch is fine. Now I have some space. Pop this to the left side. He doesn't go for the corner. But he defaults to net again. He was doing that in the last game too. And I think that's like not a good, you know, not a good decision to make, to make all the time. This guy might turn on this and boom me. Yeah. Hop over one. And now I got some space. Oh, now, my teammate's not ready in mid here, so I don't really have a passing opportunity, but I'm just going to pop it up. Teammate goes anyway. Once again, not a great position. I know that now Now that I know that he's not going to be in those positions, I'm just going to take advantage of the 1v2. Uh, really bad touch from them. Might be a good shot opportunity. Good patience for my teammate there. Good try on the challenge. So, not the greatest play for my teammate. I'm not, I'm not trying to like, rip into the guy, obviously, but you know, not, not the greatest decision making in certain spots. Good save. I'm going to leave that for him. He might be able to go again. He ends up backing off. This guy misses. It's fine. I hesitated a little bit too much there. I should have just went for the ball. Not the greatest first touch. Could be bad. So I'm going to try and make a 1v1 play here instead of going for the pass because there's no one there. This guy goes for an early cut, which is perfectly fine because we're going to get a lot of pressure here. Or it's internet. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. So this is an example of like somebody that's not quite, you know, vibing at the same pace. So I'm going to have to definitely play a little bit faster for myself and uh, take advantage of the space that I have. And also I'm noticing that the opponents are going for those early challenges. So I'm just going to go for uh, more direct shots. Make sure I just flip the ball immediately uh, when they get close to it. Oh, I might try to go for a touch again. It's totally fine. It's over. Decent touch from my teammate. My teammate's bailing on me. I got no boost here, so I'm just gonna try and stay close. He's jumping up for a ball. He doesn't need to. Man, this guy is all over the place. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it happens. My teammate turns on this. Decent try. Mid for my teammate. Yeah, we're just playing way too fast. Way faster than we need to. Alright, so I got some space here. So I'm gonna make a 1v1 play here. Really good challenge from him. And yeah, my teammate tried to go for the bump, bump play, but he just didn't go for it. Didn't get the demo at all. Like, I think he was trying to go for a play. I definitely assumed he was getting a bump, but he just completely, completely missed. <laughs> it goes off the back of my car. Uh, interesting game. Interesting game. So that's as much as I'm going to comment about it. Really good demo from Big Murph here. Good try. Big boom downfield. Frank will probably score this. He ends up missing. So I can go up for this and try to get in the way. It missed again. Maybe Big Murph can get there. It's really slow rotation. Okay. Oh, the other guy went up. Okay, the other guy missed. The other guy went immediately up. But he also misses too. Okay, this is, this is so chopped. <laughs> All right, I'll throw the forfeit out, man. That was rough. I was extremely uncomfortable, but like I said, it happens. Not the greatest game. Not the greatest game. Once again, this this uh, this series is not about, you know, if I'm losing, just completely, like, take over and play at the SSL speed. It is about um, playing to the strengths of a player who would be at this rank. And that, I mean, that game, I just don't know what, what to say about that one. I'll pop off the backboard. This guy's, like, in a really pretty poor position in mid here, but my teammate should be able to turn on this. It's a little bit high. See, that, uh, that touch was pretty good, but 
If it was a little bit closer to me, I would have definitely went for it. This guy might go for a 50 or something. So I'm just going to go like this, get a touch. Both players go. We go 50. Now I got some space. So first touch, and then I'm going to go for a flick over him. Ends up going off the corner, which is a pretty good play uh, to, you know, get one player baited into the, the defense there. Give me two stays with it. Good pop, but it's not going to be dangerous. I'm also going to take the boost here. That's both players. Oh, this guy has much boost. I'm just going to boom him off the ball. Teammate does not need to jump at all. So that's, that's another situ situation where I'm seeing a lot at this rank where they're just jumping for the play. And he's probably wasted most of his boost um, in a position where he doesn't need to be uh, going for the ball at all. And that was definitely a little bit too advanced. I went for like a flip reset off the ball and then uh, wave dash back to the ball. But either way, I'm just trying to talk about that back corner. I think that he uh, definitely should have um, let the ball just come to him in the corner, collect it, get the corner boost. Now he can go for like an air drill play or something out of the corner. But instead, he just over commits really, really quickly and wastes a lot of uh, a lot of boost. My teammate's still getting the back corner boost. So I'm just going to go for the, the ball after. And even if I miss, it's not that dangerous because uh, my teammate's ready in mid. The way that I stalled for that. I got some space here. The back corner boost just spawned. What I'm going to do is, because I can't get to the ball again, I'm going to go for a play where I come to the floor and then go for a flick. Now, I feel like this is a game where I'm kind of taking taking over a little bit more than I probably should, but... Um, the, the example there was that I, I hit a ball too far away from my car to follow the air dribble, so instead I just go for like a dribble play. Yeah, it's okay. The guy's gonna steal the back corner boost. Grab a few boost. That's a really good play. I mean, not the greatest uh, def defense in the corner there. I think what happened was, yeah, just a, a really rough touch and then tried to follow it up. Um, but he probably could have caught that a little better up the wall to keep it closer. Very interesting set of games today. You know, Big Murph might not be having a great day as well. It just—it really just depends on how you're feeling that day. Some people just don't play well on certain days. I go for a clear here. My teammate end up bailing and not getting that mid boost. So because of that, both both the opponents now get a hundred boost um, because he didn't steal that mid. So they're gonna be boosted up. We gotta make sure we don't overcommit here. He's in try. My teammate's flopping a little bit, but could get a bump here. It does get a bump on the one guy. I'm close on this ball. I'm gonna sit close challenges it's totally fine because they have to push themselves up to the field that's not a great touch for my teammate but still should be okay he went for a bump on me but i still got the touch off the corner so yeah it was a dangerous position because um we they got a free possession off of my teammates like rushed touch which once again is um a, a very very clear uh you know no no <laughs> at ssl level if you want to be ssl you got to make sure you don't just give the ball away for free it's going to be resulting in a lot more punishments uh, at the high level when they get free 1v1s and this is not even SSL level and we're still getting people going for air dribble bumps on positions where I can't really fully commit definitely we're playing a little bit too much not like we're not like carrying or anything I mean we kind of are but we're not like doing anything crazy yeah they're chasing quite a bit once again teammate rushes that I can I can bail him out there but it's not necessary to go for the touch he did because there's so much space this guy's bumping no one's here what they do with this once again big flick to them i think he tried to probably hit that a little harder this guy misses really bad touch there for me but we're in a 2v1 so it's not too bad of a deal uh, too big of a deal because somebody's in our back corner okay threw it away go for a clear on the field once again that's a pretty open shot if you want to go for the shot on target um it's a good option to you know take advantage of when a ball just spills into mid for you like that i just spun that guy out like crazy Eh, probably gonna be him here. Oops. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's see what he does here. I'm playing way slower than I usually do, obviously. But as you can see, they just keep feeding me balls where I can just boom it down the field. Play it pretty safe. They're trying to make good uh, catch play. I just take their corner boost. Give my teammate here to go for something. Looks like he's gonna miss. I'm just gonna get a touch for him instead. And then I'll watch the mid pass right away. So they weren't even ready for it, but my teammate should hopefully be able to go up for that. So a little bit of a panic. Oh, close on the save. Had to do a little bit of a delay to um, get the, you know, let the player go past me there on the demo. It's totally fine. I'm just going to bump this guy. Nothing too dangerous. Pop it forward. This should be the beast. This guy's pretty low. 
I'm gonna go high on the touch. He ends up booming it off the, the side there, but not the end of the world. This is a pretty small ball, but you can just pass this back to yourself. Now they're they're pretty much gone here. I can stay close to this in case he wants to go for a challenge, which he probably will because he's uh, desperate for a goal here. But honestly, I don't feel like I played that well this game. I wasn't like you know, taking over, but at the same time, it, the uh, opponents were just being over aggressive. My team had played pretty good positions as well. And that'll be the finish here. Ooh, a double flip reset? No. Well, we're going to get our, our rank here. I'm assuming it's GC2. Might be GC1. I don't know, actually. GC2. And I think just on the cusp of the top of it, too, because you can see my teammate just got 1560, and he's still GC1. So I think it's probably 1575. I think that's what it is for every rank is the 75 mark. Let's do one more. All right, for the last game, we got chat off vibing and spooky. Uh, versus me and Junior. So I'm the highest rated in the lobby. So everyone's GC1. Sitting around GC1. These could be GC2, GC3 players that are, you know, not quite at the level. But let's go for a touch here. The opponent was really pushed up there. Like a cut from uh, from Spooky. He puts it into the corner. Once I see him put it into the corner, I can wait here. There we go. Get a 50. Good try for my teammate. You see, they're trying to hold pressure in this corner. They're not doing anything too dangerous, though. Like, these aren't threatening positions. So I can put, stay on this ball and go for a shot. See what they do with that off the top corner. Well well defended. My teammate diving into the corner is going to be really dangerous. See if he can demo, get a demo. Good play for my teammate. Wait for hit Junior to go for this. He misses the boost, though. So I'm, I'm assuming he's going to go for some sort of 50. I hope he got that boost, because otherwise they're going to be on, our, on us the whole time here. Now, once again, that's a pretty uh, aggressive challenge for me in the corner there. I do re recover really fast. Who does with this? I don't really want to challenge this until my teammate's back. That makes a pretty heavy touch into the corner. I'm going to go for this immediately. It's going to force this guy to jump off the wall. Go for a shot. Make them both go and panic, maybe. My teammate can probably follow it. And there we go. There's a the finish. My teammate was going for that, too. Uh, but I had a feeling that I could get it on target, at least in a good position, where I just... You know, redirect it to make it really awkward for a double commit. Putting the ball in between two players in net is sometimes good because it can make them clonk each other in net. It could, um... Uh, I'm going to go for this again for him. Um, it could make them clonk each other in net. It could make them make a bad clear. Good clear there. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that this this uh, this uh player does not get any boost. That way they have to back off. Even if the guy wants to stay with it, it's not dangerous because the other guy can't be there right away. As you can see. He had to bail really far. That's decent. Get a 50-50 off the flip reset. Really aggressive challenge from our teammate, but it does work because he gets a really good catch. You can see that the more mechanical you are, the more controlled you are with the touches, the better. This guy's trying to go for a bump or something, but my teammate's already back for me to be second man. Or first man in a second. i pass this across. It's going to bounce back out and up. to be my teammate here. The way that I hit that is trying to hit that toward that curve so it either pops up or into mid. Really good defense. I really like that my teammate's not overcommitting on this. A lot of players, what they'll do, the mistake of, is that they they almost get a shot, they almost get a goal. So what do they do? They they uh, they uh, try to turn on that right away and go for another shot. But the weak, the closer you are to the ball, the weaker it's going to be, and both the players are ready for another shot. Maybe a pinch play here. Boop. So Spooky made a pretty heavy touch there, so I'm just going to go for an early challenge. See if my teammate can go for uh, the next play. Just go for a play here off or a bump here. Backflips off of those touches where they're over your head are really strong. I got to go for this immediately because the guy might challenge and go for a play. And then we get a free goal here as long as they zoom down the field. So all I need to do is just wait for uh, the other player to jump and get in the way. Sometimes players will jump even faster, though. So you have to be a little bit careful off the backboard there. But getting some sort of 50-50. I'm not assuming I'm going to get a goal there because they could shoot it and score. Or I could definitely get like a 50-50 that goes to the corner or back behind me. But once I see the... The ball in a pretty dangerous spot. I want to make sure I jump in the way of that. Good boost grab for my teammate. I see this guy's going to beat me if I push up on, on that. So I'm just going to wait behind Junior. This might bounce up nicely for me. Now, I don't think I could have went for that anyway. Even if he did, didn't make a touch. Because that other guy was ready for it. But this guy doesn't make a great touch off the back back wall. Make another challenge. Spook's going to have this. Pretty aggressive for me. I'm just going to get behind my teammate. Really good turn from him. Got a minute left in this game. Three goals to make for them. Good try. It's going to be a cross. My teammate ends up making a touch back to me. I'm just going get, to basically chip uh, the ball whenever I see an opportunity. 
like a turn for my teammate once again. This ball bounced up really nicely in the mid. And what I really want to do is pop that over the one player and not force this guy to be able to do anything with it. But he ends up getting a pretty good touch up down the field. Oops. Good touch. Spooky's going to beat me. Let's see what he does with this. Oh. Okay, so he wasn't sure what to do with the ball. I think he was trying to stay in a spot where he could, you know, uh, make a play or try to fake me out. But I was just waiting patiently. He's going for a bump play or something. It's totally fine. I'm going to let the, these guys touch the ball. Close. So that you can see Junior's constantly going for ch challenges in front of me. It's not a big deal as long as they don't go. This guy um, is going to cut out really early here. This guy's trying to jump for it. They're trying to rush because they have they need goals here. So, oh. Once again, just getting in the way. And now with 10 seconds left. Should be able to just keep it close. There we go, Junior. Oh, off the post. <laughs> Definitely a pretty good set of games after uh, that one. That was a little awkward. Um, but either way, we got 1,600. Moving up pretty nicely. I mean, even on my main main account right now, I'm not at SSL. I think I'm like top 100, but SSL's like, I think only like 40 SSLs right now. There's not many players. Like we got all the, the pros that grind the crap out of the game that, <laughs> that, you know, I don't have the time for. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We're definitely moving nicely through GC2 here. Until next time, have a great day. I'll catch you guys in the next one.